part of throwing. And it looks quite easy. And it really took, takes a long time to learn. Probably took me about six months. And that's throwing every night after the pottery used to shut. I used to stay behind from five o'clock till nine o'clock and practice. And that's it, centered. So that's the first part, which is the most important part. If it's not centered and it's just like that, when you begin to start coming up, or even just like that, that just that slight wobble, as it's coming off, you've got thick pieces and thin pieces. And by the time it gets to this big, you haven't got a pot because it's collapsed, because it's uneven. So it's really important to get it to that level before you do anything. To open up, I use my thumb. Some potters use the fingers. It's very, very personal. Every, ha every potter has their own style. I open up by taking the thumb in, I'll just move those fingers, straight down to the depth that I need. And then I'm pushing out now towards the door. So that now has got a, a flat base in the bottom of it. And then I start to make it grow tall. But before I do that, I straighten it out a little bit because I can't, I find it easier to work off that shape as opposed to that shape because you race over the hill. So if you start off with that shape, you, it's so consistent coming up. So by picking the clay up at the bottom, shifting it and just gentle pressure between your fingers on the inside and on the outside and lifting the clay up and trying to keep it as level as you can there. So it's to do with the consistency of what you're going up there, those throwing rings, nice and consistent. If you mush it, you can just throw it off again, picking it up, traveling with the clay, and just getting it so it's all the same thickness from the bottom to the top before I put any form into it. Most shapes start with this cylinder, and that's the shape for months and months. I used to have to throw boards and boards and along would come Stan, who was the master potter, with a stick and say, that's no good, that's no good, and you just replace them. And it was, a, it was such a fantastic training. Now it's just second nature. Which pottery was that then? In Birkenhead Park. Ooh. Yes. Oh. In the 70s, yeah. the late 70s and the, and the beginning of the 80s, 85 I was there till I started in. 78 from pre preparing the clay for the master potters wedging it hugging it all that basically what you need proper proper training so now i'm just putting an a shape into it so i'm pushing more on the on the inside but controlling it on the outside so i'm not thinning now i'm just shaping because I know it's the same thickness there as what it is here, so there's no wobble, it's, it's so sturdy. But if I was to take it in slightly, so if I want to take it in, that's just to take the water at the centre. So if I'm pushing that in now, because that much clay is being pushed in, I then throw that little bit because I've condensed that in, so that's made that a bit thicker, so I want it to stay the same thickness as this. So. I'm taking it in, but then I throw this part where I've taken it in, I throw that off. And if you notice the tools that I use are mainly these. I have got a wire, a homemade wire, and I have got an undercutting tool somewhere, which is all homemade. Most of my tools, that's my favourite tool. If I'm getting something and I don't want my throwing rings in, I'll use a little tiny piece of metal, but those shapes are beautifully to work with and they fit my hands. I've got loads of board tools. Where's that piece of board? There. This is an undercut tool. It's an old school ruler, wooden ruler, which I've just cut the edges. So once I feel as though that's the shape, that's the form I want, This, putting this ring in there is just where I'm going to put a handle. That's that there. That's what's making the groove. I'm just taking that bit of slip off. And to change this into 
a jug. Again, this is going to soften the rim. And let us see, turned on its side, and this finger is just going to tease. So I get a pouring. This is holding the rim, and this is just teasing it down. If you pull, it just splits the rim. You just tease it, making that gully so where the cream or the the milk is going to pour out. I'll give it another spin round because I've I've pushed it there. I might, if it's thin, sometimes it can collapse there, so it'll go in a bit. It doesn't matter if that happens. I just put my hands back inside and lift it back up, bring it back onto centre. Push that in, and there's your jug. And to lift it off, use my little ruler. If I was to cut that off using the wire now, I'd struggle because it's almost like it's, it's fused onto the wheel head. So right, just using a piece of wood just to cut out. I notice it's cutting it out, it's not pushing it in. I can get my fingers underneath where the dry piece play will be. Check that hasn't, sometimes when you spin you lose, that comes out again. Touching it back in, taking it through, finding a nice space, clean space to put it on. That's important to make sure you have clean bottoms, it's a functional piece of wear. And there you have the jug. Yep. And how do you then attach the handle? The handles are done by pulling. So I'll get a piece of clay. Handle. That's gone too dry for handle, so I wouldn't be using it anyway. But see how it's got that white on it? Yeah. It wouldn't normally be that. I'm not going to keep it. It'll crack off. If I join this on within half an hour in the sun, the handle will come apart from the. because that's already shrunk, and this is soft clay being applied to it. The shrinkage is all, is all wrong. But just for demonstrations, I can. So you're to attach it when it's still wet, like that. When it's leather hard, a bit harder than that. Okay. Not as soft as that. Yeah. Almost that state there. Do you want me to put a handle on yours? No. I'll, I'll... <laughs> I don't betray. Okay. <laughs> I don't so make sure if we've got enough to do. Thank you. Thank you. And I would do. Prepare all the handles first by rolling them all out. Dry piece, flatten. It's a little bit thin for that, but we'll join it on anyway. Cut a piece. I'm now looking at that because I need to get the right, almost the right amount lengthwise. This is a bit, a little bit thin. Then you'd score. Score with using anything sharp, normally a pin I use, but say for instance a joint on there. Let's score with. <coughs> this is just slip, this is the potter's glue, what I describe as potter's glue. A little bit of that on that binds them together, helps with the the join. So when I push that on there. Make sure it's got good contact with that body. I then begin to wear one way and then the other way. And I'll work on this. That must stay upright. If that flops over, it stresses it. And that's how you get problems with thin and thick handles. So I'll work on smoothing that in there. So that's nice and smoothed in, and then just sponge it slightly before just to clean it underneath more so than on top because I can reach the on top. And then again, so that doesn't flip it. So there's been no stress to that, that hasn't flopped. You get that flop, it's stretched, and when you come to pull, it won't work. Some nice clean water, not. 
and then begin to pull it from the bottom here so a wet hand so I'm starting at the bottom if I was to start at the top what happens is we put so much stress on the top here we get what you call necking at the top so just starting by at the bottom loads of water And what I'm doing, I'm doing it that way, but then I'm doing it that way. So I might do, you can't see the move. I go two that way and one that way. Because I don't want it to go wide. Because I've, I've got almost the right width that I want. So it's two down, one in. Two down, one in. And now I'm working further up. So I'm three quarters of the way up now. And it's starting to move down. So now I'm taking it from the top. Pulling it down. Stretching it. And at this point, I'd line it up. It's well out. I haven't, I haven't lined it up. And I'd look at it there to see if it's got enough lift from that. It's nice and straight. It's not straight with the... Um... And then just by holding this and taking it round before the handle, before you join it on, just check that it's straight. So if that is pushing over or pulling there. It's not straight with that there, but... If that was a, you check it from all angles. So if that was a, a cut, sometimes it can be off like that. So just by looking at it and pulling it over, or this bottom one, see that could be that way. Just make sure it's straight all the way round. Support it on the inside. A good press. Take off the excess. And just any people use different joints. You can put patterns on there. And again, I'd normally have scored that bottom a little bit before I've, because it's made its own slip by pulling it. And when I join it, it sort of makes that little bit of slip with the work that I'm doing now. And that's it, handle. If it drops, if it slumps like that, you just turn and tap. And it'll reform that natural form as opposed to a staged. So I would dry that upside down to allow that to set it back because that's the, that's the lift that I want. But one bash and you can lose it. So if you mm. drop, if you put your board down heavy, it'll just do that, and you've really got away to get them. I would be worried about that there because I've messed with that so much now. The weak, I would weaken that point there. But that's yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Are they killed guys then? Not air guys.